the McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II. Just hearing the name sends shivers down the spines of enemies and sparks awe in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts. This is not just an aircraft, it's a legend. The Harrier II is an icon of modern military aviation. It's instantly recognizable by its unique ability to take off vertically. The Harrier II is a testament to human ingenuity, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the sky. For decades, the Harrier II has been a symbol of American air power. It has served with distinction in conflicts around the globe. The Harrier II is a versatile and powerful weapon. It changed how we think about close air support. This essay explores the remarkable history of the AV-8B Harrier II. From its inception to its retirement, we will delve into the design, capabilities, and legacy of this extraordinary aircraft. The AV-8B Harrier II has its roots in the United Kingdom. The British were the first to develop the original Hawker Siddeley Harrier. This was the first operational fixed-wing VTL, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Seeing the potential, McDonnell Douglas, later Boeing, partnered with British Aerospace in the 1970s to develop a second-generation Harrier. This became the AV-8B Harrier II. The Harrier II featured significant improvements over its predecessor. It had a new, larger wing made of composite materials. This increased its payload and range. The cockpit was redesigned with modern avionics. This reduced pilot workload. The engine was also upgraded, providing greater thrust and reliability. The defining feature of the Harrier II, like its predecessor, was its VTOL capability. This was achieved through four vectored thrust nozzles. These are located on the fuselage. The pilot could direct the thrust of the engine downwards. This allowed the Harrier II to take off and land vertically. It could also hover in mid-air. This made it incredibly adaptable to various environments, particularly where traditional runways were unavailable. The Harrier II's VTOL capabilities set it apart from virtually every other fixed-wing aircraft. This wasn't just a technological novelty, it was a game-changer in military aviation. The ability to take off and land vertically meant the Harrier II didn't need long runways. It could operate from improvised landing sites close to the battlefield. This gave it unparalleled flexibility. Imagine this, a Harrier II taking off from the deck of a ship, rising vertically into the sky. It could then transition to horizontal flight and provide close air support to troops on the ground. After completing its mission, it could land back on the ship or even a small clearing in a forest. This unique capability made the Harrier II a vital asset in various combat scenarios. It could operate from amphibious assault ships, forward operating bases, and even damaged runways. This gave it a significant tactical advantage in combat. The Harrier II wasn't just about raw power and VTOL prowess, it was also a technological marvel, packed with advanced avionics that made it a formidable fighting machine. At the heart of its systems was a sophisticated radar. This radar could detect and track enemy aircraft and ground targets. It also provided ground mapping capabilities, enhancing the pilot's situational awareness. Adding to its arsenal of sensors was a laser rangefinder and target designator, this system allowed the pilot to accurately measure the distance to targets. It could also designate targets for laser-guided munitions, ensuring pinpoint accuracy. For nighttime operations, the Harrier II could be equipped with night vision systems. These systems allowed the pilot to see clearly in low-light conditions. This significantly expanded the aircraft's operational envelope, making it a true 24-7 fighting force. Section 5 armed and ready weaponry of the Harrier II. The Harrier II was a versatile weapons platform. It could carry a wide array of ordnance to defeat enemy forces on the ground and in the air. Its primary air-to-ground weapons included the AGM-65 Maverick missile. This is a highly accurate, electro-optically guided missile. It can engage a variety of targets including tanks, armored vehicles, and bunkers. For close air support missions, the Harrier II could be loaded with a variety of bombs, this included the MK-82 General Purpose Bomb, Cluster Bombs, and Laser Guided Bombs. These provided the firepower needed to neutralize enemy positions and support friendly troops in contact. For self-defense, the Harrier II was typically armed with AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. These short-range, heat-seeking missiles are highly effective against enemy aircraft. It could also be equipped with a 25mm cannon for close-range engagements. 
A Section 6, a legacy forged in battle operational history. The Harrier II's operational history is as impressive as its capabilities. It has seen action in multiple conflicts, proving its worth in the crucible of combat. The aircraft first saw combat in the 1991 Gulf War, where it flew over 1,300 sorties. The Harrier II provided close air support to coalition forces. It also conducted reconnaissance and interdiction missions. Following the Gulf War, the Harrier II saw extensive action in the Balkans. It supported NATO operations in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and later in Kosovo. The aircraft's ability to operate from austere bases and provide precision strikes proved invaluable in the mountainous terrain. After the September 11th attacks, the Harrier II was deployed to Afghanistan. It supported Operation Enduring Freedom. It flew close air support missions against Taliban and Al-Qaeda forces. The aircraft's VTL capabilities were particularly useful in the country's rugged mountains. Section 7, Versatility in Action, From Close Air Support to Humanitarian Aid Beyond its combat prowess, the Harrier II demonstrated remarkable versatility. It wasn't just a weapon, it was a tool that could be used in a variety of missions, including humanitarian aid and disaster relief. The aircraft's ability to land and take off in tight spaces made it ideal for delivering supplies to disaster-stricken areas. For example, following the devastating 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, Harrier II's were deployed to Indonesia. They delivered much-needed medical supplies, food and water to isolated communities. The aircraft's ability to operate without runways proved invaluable in reaching those who needed help the most. In 2005, Harrier II's were again called upon for disaster relief. This time it was in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. The aircraft flew missions along the Gulf Coast. They delivered supplies, evacuated casualties, and assessed damage. Section 8. The Final Flight. Retirement and Legacy. After nearly four decades of distinguished service, the AV-8B Harrier II was officially retired from the United States Marine Corps in 2020. The retirement of this iconic aircraft marked the end of an era in naval aviation. It left a void that is difficult to fill. The Harrier II's legacy continues to inspire. Its innovative design, VTL capabilities, and combat record have left an indelible mark on military aviation. The aircraft paved the way for future generations of VTL aircraft, such as the F-35B Lightning II. The Harrier II's influence extends beyond technology. Its operational use shaped how we think about close air support. Its ability to operate close to the front lines and respond quickly to calls for help redefined the concept of battlefield air power. Section 9. Inspiring Future Generations The AV-8B Harrier II may be gone, but its spirit lives on. Its story is a testament to what's possible when innovation meets determination. The Harrier II will forever be remembered as one of the most iconic and influential military aircraft ever built. It will continue to inspire generations of aviators, engineers, and enthusiasts for years to come. The Harrier II story teaches us to push the boundaries of what's possible. It shows that even the most challenging goals can be achieved with creativity and perseverance. The legacy of the Harrier II is a source of pride for all those who designed, built, maintained, and flew this remarkable machine. Its impact on aviation will continue to be felt for generations.